Hey guys, it's Makeshift, and today I'm going to show you how to make your plush poseable. So if you see this plush here, I can move his arms to be posed, and they stay in place. And that's thanks to some armature that I have in this plush. It gives the plush more personality and can be a nice detail, and it's really easy to do. There are a lot of different materials that you can use to actually go ahead and make a type of skeleton for your plush and the material you use depends on the plush itself so I'll go through all of that. This isn't jointing a plush so making your plush posable is a little bit different than jointing in my definition. So a jointed plush would mean that something like an arm is a separate piece and then you join that piece onto your plush and then it can kind of pivot at the area where you join it. So I do plan on making that video at a later time, but this video won't go over how to joint a plush. This is specifically for making things like your arms posable. You could also put them in the legs and then they could sit down. You could do that for a tail if you wanted to make the tail posable. Wings is also another common one because if you add some type of wire or armature to wings, you can make them posable, but on top of that, it would also provide some stability to the wing itself. You could also do this for fingers, so if your plush has individual fingers sewn into it, you could run a piece of armature down every finger to make the fingers able to be posed. So there are a lot of different applications for if you want to make your plush posable that are really fun. So we'll start by going through the different types of materials you can use to make your plush posable. And then we'll walk through how to get them into your plush, which is super simple. So let's get started. So the type of material you want to use depends on how heavy your plush is and how complex the shape is that you're trying to, to armature and how large it is as well. So you could use something all the way down to a pipe cleaner, which is obviously very soft and very weak, or you could go all the way up to something heavy duty, like this type of wire here, which is very strong. It takes a decent amount of effort to bend it, uh, so you would feel more of that wire in your plush, depending on how thin the part is that you're wiring. I have these materials organized in order of strength. So all the way down here at the left, these are pipe cleaners. So if you have a very small plush that doesn't need a lot of support to get your, your pose that you want, you could use something like pipe cleaners. It's nice because they have the fuzziness, so it kind of protects that feeling of wire being in your plush. And so if you're doing something very simple, maybe like doing some horns or antenna or something like that, uh, pipe cleaner might be a good option because it will provide some support on its own, but it's not going to make it very hard at the same time. But it's still very easy to bend and shape, uh, but it'll hold a shape better than the pipe cleaner would, but it does have that feeling of wire. I've also used this to just make antenna. So instead of feeding this into a fabric piece, I've just used this as the antenna itself. And I'll go ahead and flash a picture of what that looks like on the screen. But if you really have a piece that you need to maintain the thin look while having support, something like a floral wire would be a good option. And there are different strengths of floral wire and that depends on how thick it is, um, the gauge of it. So you just need to kind of find one that works for you. And again, this is the, the wrapped version. So it has some coating on the outside to make it less wire-like. Next, I have this type of wire that I believe I found this at Joann's and it was in the jewelry area. So it's just another type of very bendy wire. So if you're looking for something more strong than pipe cleaners, I recommend just going to your local hobby shop and looking around either the jewelry area or the uh, floral area for something like this. And, and you can usually test it out yourself and play with it to see how strong it is. But 
it's one step above the floral wire so it is thicker and it's sturdier but it's still very easy to bend which I like a lot. Next we have plastic armature. So this stuff is specifically made for creating armature in dolls and plushies. So it is made of little joints. So if I were to pull this apart, each one of these little nodes is an individual plastic piece. So you can bend it into shape and make your plush pose with this. And this is what I'm going to be using for my plushie today because my plushie is pretty large. Um, so I want to use something with some thickness and some strength to it. But I also like the, uh, the plastic armature because it, it's not wired. It is plastic armature, so it feels a bit more uh, plush-like, if you will. And I like the, the posing ability you'll be able to get with the, with the armature. You can easily make skeletons with this because it comes with some extra attachments, which I'll go over when I work with this individually. Um, but it can be difficult to join together if you don't have the set of pliers, which I actually don't. If you are going to work with this stuff a lot, you'll need to buy an extra tool, uh, which may not be desired. It's also more expensive than this wire usually, so if you're looking for a cheap way to pose your plush, this likely isn't it. Um, but it is nice high quality stuff and I like it a lot. And so the last option I have here is some very heavy duty wire. I believe I found this at a Home Depot or some kind of home improvement store. So if you push on it, it is very sturdy. It will hold a very heavy piece pretty well. And so I'll put up an image of a tail that I made with this. This tail was very large and had a lot of feathers coming from it. So I needed something very strong to hold it up. And I try not to use this heavy duty wire in it because I do like my plushies to stay softer and to be more cuddly, but I, I just couldn't get it to hold up on itself any other way. So I did have to use this wire. And if you do have a larger piece um, where the wire is gonna be running in the middle of it, you won't be able to feel the hardness as much, but if you were having a, a very thin piece where it's almost just as, as thin as this wire is, you will really be able to feel the wire in it. But there are some options for if you need to hold up something very heavy. And so for the wire-based ones like the floral wire or these two wire types here, you will need a tool like a wire cutter to cut through these. Um, it's pretty cheap and if you have just a general tool set at your house, you might already have these. Um, you might be able to get through the wire with just a normal pair of scissors depending on what gauge you get. And you could be able to cut through the, the pipe cleaner as well. But if you are gonna use scissors to cut through either one of these wires, just make sure you're using a pair of scissors that you do not use on fabric because Cutting something like this will dull your scissors pretty quickly, so you want to just use a, a spare pair of scissors that you have. So if you wanted to use the pipe cleaners or the other types of wire to make an armature for your plush, you would really just need to twist them together somehow. So if you wanted to make a, a body shape where this is the head and these are the arms, you would just need to start twisting them together to make this sort of shape. So obviously this will be very easy with pipe cleaners because they're kind of meant to be very soft and used for crafts and you might have a more difficult time with the, the wires, but you'll have to figure out some way to get them to mold into shape. You could also just make them separate pieces, but they might kind of, uh, they might separate over time or they might get kind of lost in the plush where they, they move position and so if you make just one large armature, you won't run the risk of the armature inside it shifting over time and, and losing place. But if you're only going to be doing something like jointing the, the arms or the legs, you probably won't have this issue. Uh, you could probably just run one large piece through it or just two separate pieces. 
So even with this softer wire, you can easily bend it into shape to get the more armature look to it. But the area where it connects like this is gonna be a little bit thicker. So you need to keep that in mind depending on how your, your plush forms together. But if you'd like to go with the, the full skeleton method, this is how you would do it with the wire type of armature. These plastic armatures come in a variety of widths, so I have just kind of a, a medium one here, but they also come thicker than that, and you'll just have to check whatever website you're buying from for what size that you want. But I like this, this length here. It's kind of a good medium between when I make smaller plushies and then even my, my large plushies that I make now function well with this size plastic armature in them. So typically I just use this to joint the arms in a plush. I haven't made a full body skeleton with it because I don't have the pliers to actually join these pieces together. Plastic armature is designed to make the skeletons in a plush because they also sell these little connecting points that you can buy to help with that. So you could use this four piece one to joint the arms coming out from the sides as well as the head in one direction and then the spine. And then you could use this one down here to separate out the, the legs at the bottom and, and the spine here as well. Or you could use this to do just the arms. But again, these are pretty difficult to get together without the set of pliers that they sell with these plastic armatures. So if you are gonna be working with the plastic armature quite a bit, you probably need to invest in those pliers. I don't have the pliers because I haven't had an, a need for them yet. You can easily take this stuff apart without the pliers, even though they say that you need the pliers to take them apart. If you just bend it hard enough, it's gonna pop it apart. And I'm not gonna do this because I actually can't get them back together without them. But I just, when I take them apart, I just make sure that I measure how long I need it to be and then just kind of push on it hard enough together until this pops apart and then you'll have the length that you need. But actually joining these pieces together is tough because it's specifically meant to be safe for children. They don't want this coming apart because it's supposed to be child safe. So even if I push on this as hard as I can, I cannot get this in together. So you need the, the set of pliers if you actually want to form skeletons with the plastic armature. I have heard that you can get these together with like two sets of pliers and a hammer. If you grip both pieces with a plier and then with a strike of a hammer, you can actually perfectly get this to go in, but I haven't tried it myself. I'm not sure that I'm coordinated enough to do that. So regardless of the type of wire that I use, I always use my plush itself to determine how long I need the cut of armature to be. So for this plush, I want to joint the arms. I don't want to use two separate pieces of armature. I just want to run one long piece to each arm. So it's gonna start at one arm, go through the shoulders, and then end at the other arm. So I just take a length of whatever armature I'm using and lie it up against the plush and bend it into shape to know how long I need it to be. So I've already done that with this piece and that's why it lines up perfectly here. But if you were using wire, you would just take the, the long bit of wire that you have and then do the same process where you could just kind of roll it out, bend it into shape, and then kind of mark somehow where you need it to end. And then you can use your tools to cut it into shape, which I'm not gonna do because this isn't the type of wire that I'm using, but that's how you would measure it out for something else. So once you have your armature cut into the length that you need, all you have to do now is put it into your plush. So you would open up wherever your plush opens and then just stick it in. So 
You don't want your plush to be stuffed too hard to where you can't actually push the armature in. And if you're using plastic armature, having a very hard stuffed plush is gonna be more of a problem because you won't actually be able to get this thick armature through your hard stuffing. If you're using wire, you probably would have an easier time because it's thinner and sharper. But for plastic armature, you need it to be stuffed a bit softer. So because it bends so easily, it can be a bit difficult to get it all the way through. But then you can just feel at the very end to where it has met the, the end of your, your piece. And then grab the other side and then you're gonna have to kind of bend it back and then start pushing in the other side. So you can also feel as you do this where the armature is. You also want to make sure that your armature is running in the middle of your piece if you can because you will get the maximum amount of posability out of having your armature be in the, the middle of your piece. All right, so now I feel that it's gone right here. So just a little bit more and then it'll be at the end. So then you can straighten out the shoulder piece, tuck it in, and then you're done. So now his arm can pose. So now you can check on the posability. So if we play around with his arms here, see we can get them all the way up like this. You can T-pose them. You can bend them. So it looks real cute. So it looks good and I'm happy with the placement and how he's able to move. So that's about it. You can go ahead and finish up your plush from here. You can close up any stuffing holes that you need to and wrap it up. So thanks for watching today and hope you guys learned something and see you next time.